Welcome back everybody and it's again some time to push the bitwig. And as promised in the last tutorial today I want to show you a little bit around how you can play the notes and how to use the sequences. And yeah, if you look at the push you have this uh, layout of a scale. If you have no idea about what a scale is, just read it up and get the music theory first. And the layout is pretty the same and also the functionality is the same as with Ableton. So you can read it up also in a manual how this all is arranged. The important thing to note is just uh, the bass notes are colored in, in, in blue and all other notes of the scale are painted in white. And if you press the scale button you can change the root note. For example, we, I already changed it to D uh, minor. So here you can select the root notes and here you can change uh, your preferred scale. And also you can use here the button up there to change the scales. So let's go to D minor again. And also you can say uh, you don't want only to see the root notes and the scale notes. You want to see all notes available. So you see a chromatic version now and you have still your root notes colored in blue and the scale notes in white and uh, the non-scale notes are colored in black. You can also use this for example to play if you want to play drums full scale. So if you have checked out the new Ableton version 9.2 it has a mode where you have the full grid for playing the drums. You can use also this one now with, with Bitwig to, to do the same. And with Bitwig you have the advantage that you can for each track you can say uh, you can select the layout you like to see. So if you want to have note mode or a specific sequencer or the drum grid and this is remembered for each track so you can also use uh, the drum sequencer for sequencing a synth so you're not fixed if you have a, a drum instrument on the channel that you have to use a drum sequencer so you're completely free whatever you prefer to use on a track uh, with Bitwig. A function that is pretty hidden and I think it's also not in the manual of Ableton Live that when you press the shift button you have the option to change the layout so currently you have this distance of fourth and you can change it in a direction so it's now in that direction instead of that one and you can also if you prefer you can have thirds so the distance is three here from that one to that line and also in the other direction and you can also have it sequentially going up the scale so nice hidden function if you prefer a different layout. So okay why not record something as I showed before we can use the new one uh, the new button to start a clip and we activate the metronome. Here we go. And as you see when I play the keys now that I'm recording the lights are colored in red and if I turn off recording they are green again. So let's turn them off. So now they are green. Also, if you select an existing clip and playing them, you see always what are the played notes. Let's turn off the metronome here. So nice little clip here. Let's stop that one. And uh, if you want to do a performance, you can not only play the crit, you can also use here the, the ribbon control. And this is a much improved instead of using it with Ableton. You have much more functionality here. Normal behavior is just that you have uh, the pitch band available. So pitch band up and down of the note. And with Bitwig if you press the shift key and touch the button you have much more features now. You can change for example say you want to have a specific MIDI CC a continuous controller ascent with when you play it. Let's check that out. So now I'm using uh, CC1 so up there you see which one you have selected so CC1 is modulation. And in a polysynth I programmed that that modulation is um, changing the pitch. And in that right part you can select which MIDI CC you'd like to use. 
and there are some pre-programmed ones so if you go here you select modulation if you go here expression which is number 11 or volume which is number 7 or sustain which is number 64 but you can also change it if you use a knob here to any number you like so let's go back to modulation and what's really nice is that you don't, are not um, fixed to say you want pitch band or CC, you can have a combination. If I check that one, it's pitch and CC. So the lower part is doing the pitch and the upper part is doing uh, the sending the selected CC. If I play the note, I can now do something like this. So I can pitch band up and then go into modulation which is pretty nice for performing. And the other option is the other way around, so we can go down and then we go into modulation. So pretty nifty, I would prefer that one. Going a little bit relation and back again. That's basically the functionality you have in playing notes. So now let's press note again and go into sequencing mode. And uh, to do the sequencer, we will also start a new clip. And you have now basically the same. You see here, uh, here is again your scale. So this one is, is the root note and the rest of the scale is up there. And as you also have seen with the drum sequencer up here, uh, you see the number of your measures. So we have now two measures playing. And also quite the same as with a drum sequencer, you can change a measure, for example, for one, keep it pressed, press another one. So now we have five measures going on and so on. So let's first go to one and simply press the button to put in a beat. Enlarge it to two. And again, like with a drum sequencer, you can move to right and left. Don't mind the interruption and the noise and, and the weird stops. This is because my recording software for the tutorial is somehow interfering with Bitwig. So this should normally not happen. Yeah, and what you can also, you can use, uh, you can also change the scales here. And you can also go up one octave, up or down. And this is something I forgot also when, when playing the notes, you can do the, the same, go up octave, ups and down. Let's stop this, this is really annoying. Okay, this is basically already everything to say about the sequence mode. Also like with the drum uh, mode, you can uh, change the resolution. So go to eighths or sixteenths and the thirty twos or the or the triplets, so this is basically the same. So nothing much to see here. Let's go to more funny stuff, which is a raindrop sequencer. This is completely different. As with the other sequencers, you need to have a clip going on uh, to see something happening. And if I use that one, the, uh, at the lower part you already, uh, you also see uh, your your scale, so your scale notes are there. But what you now do is uh, start a raindrop. And always when it's, when, <laughs> okay, it's hard to explain. Let's, let's first do something different. Let's have um, a bigger track. Let's, cre let's create a new one. So let's say fixed, we want to have four bars and also use a new one. So again, start a raindrop. And what happens always when when a node goes down on, on, on the bottom row, it makes a sound. And we can do this also with multiple ones. And then you get very interesting polyrhythmic stuff. And uh, interesting to notice why that one, for example, it's it's jumping. The the logic is always calculating uh, where this raindrop needs to be drawn. So if it does not fit your number of measures when the repeat is happening, it needs to be drawn uh, differently. 
but I did it like this because you can also use existing clips for this visualization and also you can change it. Also if I go to, to that drum part we did before and play that one, you also see the visualization there. So you don't have to start with that one. But you can also use it for very funny visualizations of your music. Again, don't mind the interruption, this is just the interference with the recording program. Yeah. And uh, also, uh, as with the other sequences, you can change uh, the resolution here. Then it's going a long way here. And you can also uh, go octaves up and down. Yeah, I think that's basically the features of all the sequences. That was a raindrop sequencer, we have a drum sequencer, you have the normal Ableton Live sequencer and you have normal play mode. And I think we call it a day with that one. And see you in the next part. And now go and create some music. Bye.